across the country. Welcome to another One Soccer Hangout, the first one of the week. Unfortunately, we had to cancel yesterday's, but we're happy you're joining us today. I'm your host, Asa Raymond, along with Oliver Platts and Adam Jenkins, and we are very happy to have a special guest with us today, FC Edmonton's Easton Ongaro. Thanks for joining us, Easton, and I have to know, uh, Edmonton's looking a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter these days. Are you attempted to get out with the soccer ball and knock it around a little bit more these days? Yeah, definitely. I've uh, been getting out to the field basically every day just by my house, setting up the net and uh, yeah, just getting individual training sessions in. How have those been going for you? Uh, it's been good. It's uh, nice to finally get out there, have some uh, grass under my feet and uh, yeah, not be stuck at home every day. Easton, you, uh, I, yeah. sorry, I was, going, I was just going to mention, I've heard from Jeff Paulus, you were with the Whitecaps for a little while during the offseason, getting some training in, and then obviously you returned to the CPL preseason. Um, how frustrating has it been to kind of put that extra effort in and, and then have the brakes put on things? Yeah, so I spent uh, two months in Vancouver training with their development squad. Yeah. And uh, it was really good for me. I got fit. Uh, it was good training. And then, yeah, I came into preseason fit, ready to go, feeling good. And then... Uh, yeah, things came to an end really quick and uh, got set back. So, yeah, it was frustrating, but uh, there's not much we can do about it. And everyone's kind of in the same boat. So, uh, yeah, I can't, can't really complain, but it's uh, yeah, definitely frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adam, yeah, you've been at home as well. How are you keeping fit? Keeping fit, um, riding bikes as much mm -hmm. as I can because, yeah. like, the running thing with my knees were starting to feel it. I was starting to feel like like a forty year old instead of a twenty four ish year old. <laughs> so, yeah, I was getting on the bike a little bit, and then we've had just terrible weather. So I've taken some time off, but now mom and dad have me renovating the house with them, so that's keeping me active. Yeah, that's all right. It's good to keep uh, keep loose, keep active. Uh, well, we got a bit of news to get to right away. Uh, Oliver Platt uh, mentioned this. He tweeted this out yesterday, late last night. Uh, teased us with a bit of news that the CAMPL was going to see its first player uh, move on to a top division team in Europe. We find out today that it is uh, York Nines Emilio Estevez. Uh, what are your thoughts on this announcement, uh, Oliver? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And I think, you know, you look at the, the big transfers out of the CPL this offseason, Borges, Waterman, and, and now Estevez, you couldn't really ask for better kind of marketing material for the league. You know, you have the one player in Borges who comes back from Europe gets the first team opportunity, the pro minutes in Canada and and goes on to, to a bigger club. Then you have the perfect um, advert for the U Sports draft and, and Joe Waterman. He comes into the league and, and gets a move to MLS. Mm -hmm. And now you have Emilio Estevez who came through another mechanism the league created, which was the open trials. Um, so it's it's really kind of the perfect three players to to showcase, you know, how the league is is helping Canadian players to come through. Mm -hmm. um, I think the interesting thing with Estevez is that he probably wouldn't be you know, certainly I think people reading my tweet last night probably wouldn't have guessed that it would be him or, or he wouldn't have been their 10th or 20th guess. Um, but he is a player a bit like Joel Waterman, who I think has a lot of raw talent, um, a lot of technical ability. And, and that's been noticed, particularly when he went to play for, for Chinese Taipei yeah. uh, in World Cup qualifying. And, and so I think, um, you know, the club in Holland is, is taking a bit of a gamble on that raw talent. And it's been interesting to see two players with Waterman again being the other one who maybe weren't waterman was a very good player but maybe not the the stars of the league in that first season um but they do have that potential and that upside that the teams are, are gambling on yeah emilio heading to the netherlands uh in the eredivisie with uh, Otto den Haag. uh what is the club getting with this player uh easton you, you went up against him uh, what type of player is he yeah he's a quick dynamic player very technical gifted and yeah you can see he's got a lot of potential and uh i mean this transfer for players like me, it's extremely motivating. You see all these doors opening for young Canadians and just uh, really opens your eyes to, to the possibilities. Have you been surprised by how quickly it's kind of happened, Easton, with, with those three guys and Tyler Atado as well moving on? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I mean, if you would have said these things were going to happen a year and a half ago, I think people would have laughed at you. Um, and, and now it's happening. I mean, seems like every couple of weeks there's some sort of news coming out about players from CPL with clubs looking at them and whatnot. And yeah, it's just amazing what, what's going on in Canadian soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everyone was happy about this signing, except maybe Gareth Wheeler, who liked to use all the Emilio uh, Estevez puns uh, when he's calling the games. Uh, Adam, how much are you going to miss uh, calling uh, Emilio Estevez's name? 
Yeah, so we have these little things we do to remember players' names when the first time we see them, especially with a big roster like soccer. So um, I would I never dropped one. I didn't want to go that I didn't want to go there. But uh, every time he'd do something good, I knew that if he ever scored, wheels or I were gonna have that Emilio. And I was really looking forward to it. But um, yeah, no, I, I'm just happy for the guy. I mean, I think Oliver made a great point where it's maybe not the first part the first player you would think of or further down the list even but I definitely agree with you as well that the the exposure of World Cup qualifying definitely lifted him up especially for a European club like that and with the season they had before it got voided they are in an opportunity or in a position where they can make a bit of a gamble and hopefully it pays off for both sides but definitely encouraging all around yeah Elton John's gone as well so we're really struggling for as far as the good names are concerned that's the that's the downside that we're losing some nicknames Easton have you ever got the big e I feel like that's too easy yeah, no, not really. <laughs> okay, the only reason I ask it, and this is a really lame personal anecdote, but we have a, there's a garage door opening company, or like garage door company in Belleville that's called the Big E. So every time I saw your name, I was like, yeah, I don't want to go there either, but we're, we'll get there. We'll come up with a good one for you. Yeah, it's hard to avoid the height, obviously. Um, so we'll get right to our over-under segments. And the first first one, I'm going to toss it up to, uh, to Oliver Platt. So we'll get everyone involved in these over-under questions. Uh, but I want to know, uh, what do you think? Over or under, Oliver, is Ishan Angaro six feet, six inches. I'm going to go six foot six. Over six. or under, six, six. Well, this was a bit of a talking point for us last season because I think we were told six, four, six, five, six, right. six, maybe, maybe even a couple of six, sevens thrown around at times. <laughs> um, I I think it's a, I, I'm going to go with six, six. So I don't know. Does that make me over or under? We're going gonna to go with six, six. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Adam, no, we'd we'd have to technically we'd have to go like six, five and three quarters for yeah, really to take that. the over there. That. Um look, I'm I'm not holding anything against Easton for his height. I'm just saying that as someone who's five foot six, I like to knock people down a peg wherever I can. So I'm gonna take the under. <laughs> you can take the under. See, I figured that um that Easton would have the exact measurement, so it'd be a quarter inch over or under. That's why <laughs> I thought six six would work. So is it uh, over or under six six Easton? Uh, I, I think I'm just barely over 6'6". Six, six. Like, there you go. 6'6 six, six and a quarter. Rub it in, Easton. Rub it in. We're off to a great start here. <laughs> you had a, a serious growth for it. Uh, Jeff Paulus basically saying you went off to university, came back, um, and you just sprouted. Uh, is, is that true? When when did you have this growth spurt? And, and um, yeah, how much did you go? I mean, I really started to grow in, like, grade 10. I think yeah. I went into grade 10 at, like, uh, five foot 10, maybe. And by the end of high school, I was six five, and then uh, out of high school, I grew another inch and a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think the, the rest of my body uh, took some time to catch up. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's it's still catching up. I think I got some weight to put on still. Mm. Well, while watching a... the last Sorry, dance, just... Uh, just saying, uh, while watching the last dance uh, documentary on uh, the Chicago Bulls, I'm learning that that's the secret to success. Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan both. I grew like six inches in a summer. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> that helps when you go from six one to to six six or six seven. That's uh, yeah, probably helps your basketball career. Um, yeah, sorry, Ollie, you were gonna say. I, I was just gonna ask you, Do you ever find that it's uh, obviously you know it's a, it's a really good physical asset to have in a soccer game? But do you ever find it's a bit of a hindrance in terms of how people perceive you? Because you're quite a technical player, and you even played on the wing sometimes. But do you find people have maybe expected you just to be the guy they send a long ball up to? Yeah, I think uh, initially when, when someone looks at me, that's kind of just what they expect from me. Right. And uh, I think it takes some time for people to kind of watch me play and see kind of how I move and, and what I can do for them to realize that that might not be my, my strongest asset and that there's yeah. other things to my game. So, so yeah, I, I would agree with that, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. technically sound. All right, uh, the next over-under question. Um, how many goals will Easton get in his next full season? We have it set at 12 and a half. Adam, I'll, I'll let you go first. Hmm. Despite everything that I just said about trying to knock Easton down a peg, I do think that there's there's a lot there, and I'm not going to name names who uh, people at this network who think that maybe we saw the peak of Easton go for right now. But I think it's I'll take the over for a full season with a balanced schedule. I think that Edmonton. We'll get to this in a little bit, but I think Edmonton had a lot more to give towards the end of the year before they started experimenting with things. And I think Easton's there, it's going to be impossible for Jeff to take you out of the lineup, assuming you can stay healthy and fit. So I'll take the over. I got the confidence. Are, are you saying that a certain expert might take the under in this one? Is that what you're? 
I'm not saying data? that specifically. I'm alluding to an expert who might take that. We don't know for sure. We can only assume. Right. <laughs> Ollie, what do you think? 12 and a half over or under? Uh, I want to hear Easton, what Easton thinks first. 12.5 12. 12. over or under? Um, assuming I can stay healthy for the whole season and, and we do have a full season uh, with the additions we've made to our team this year in terms of the, the final third attacking players, I'm going to have to go over with that one. <laughs> nice. Like Back it. yourself. Yeah, um, I, I did say on a recent show that um, Easton might be my golden boot pick if, if we were starting the season right now. So I'll, I'll go with the over as well. Yeah, I think I, I, I would take the over as well. Easton, one of the most exciting players to watch in that first season of the Canadian Premier League. Uh, the next one, the winning percentage for FC Edmonton this year, uh, 600 or 60%. Uh, Easton, over or under that mark? Uh, I think I got to say over. I think we've made some uh, good additions this year and uh, we're definitely going to be an improvement on last year. And I think we know, we know kind of where we struggled last year and what needed to be improved. And uh, I think we've got a good thing going this year, is assuming we uh, get a season underway eventually. Yeah. yeah. Ollie, do you agree? Um, sorry, I've got to take the under on this one because 60% yeah. is very high. Um, I think it was about, probably Edmonton were about 30% in terms of winning percentage last year. So doubling that is pretty tricky. I think if they can get up to 50, they'll be very happy and, and have a good season. So I'll, I'll go under on that one. The odds makers make this tough though, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Adam, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to side with Ollie. And the only reason I say that, aside from trying to differ from what Ollie added, just the doubling is one thing, but... I, I agree with you, Easton, that there's a lot of things that Jeff has done to make this team better. The only reason I'm not signing up for it right now, because I always play these games with the thought that I'm, if I'm putting money on this and I just don't know that I'm there yet, because we never saw the consistency. There's so much potential on that team. It was similar to York. We were waiting for that to sort of carry over game after game after game. I think they can get there. 600 in the, as a rebound, I'm not quite sure. But once once we see that come the consistency i i think they're definitely up in that battling for the third spot but i did want to add ace if you don't mind yeah. me hijacking for a second yeah. we we talked about this a few times throughout the off season that we think that edmonton was closer to three than they finished because jeff seemed to experiment a little bit try different lineup pieces i'm not trying to suggest that he threw in the towel by any means but we did see that experimenting i just want to get easton's take because we haven't asked an fc edmonton player about this mm -hmm. was there a bit more do you think lineup changes and it was tough to get that momentum towards the end of the season or or what was the the thought process in pregame before those matches the last five or six matches yeah i think uh there came a point where we kind of realized that we might not be challenging for those top two spots anymore. And uh, it was definitely a bit of a uh, try different things, try different players, give, give some younger players opportunities and see who can maintain a spot in the roster for next season. And I think uh, that's kind of what the, the idea was there is to just give everyone a chance and see what works and uh, kind of planning for the, for the next season. Yeah, Jeff definitely did that towards the end of the season, uh, regardless of uh, what uh, our, our people were saying uh, at the One Soccer Studio. So that brings us to our next uh, over-under uh, question. Uh, over-under number of times Jeff Paulus calls out the One Soccer over. pundits. And we have over. it set it at nine. <laughs> I don't even know what the number and a half. is. Can't go high enough, Adam or Ollie? Yeah. It's going to be oh, nine and a half. Over-under, Ollie? Um, if, if we're just talking on air, then maybe under, cause that's, you know, that's a good third of the game. So that, that'll be quite <laughs> a lot. But if we're also talking about Jeff's Twitter account, then yeah. I think we're easily being the over there. That's, that's the secret sauce. <laughs> if the Twitter account is back, that, that yeah. over is, I'm taking that over every time. <laughs> what do you think, Easton? Uh, I, I guess it depends how many games we end up playing this year. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. We gotta wait for that. All right. The last one then, uh, red cards, uh, at the season's El Clasico's uh, two and a half is what we have it uh, set at. Uh, last year it was just a one, right? So red cards at the El Clasico, maybe, um, yeah, a little more fight in those matches uh, whenever they might happen. He's in two and a half. You think more than that or less? I'm going to go with under. Oh, clean games. He's a yeah. pacifist. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Golly? Think things heat up a bit um i'm gonna take the over i i think the two teams would be more evenly matched this year and and that might lead, lead itself to a little bit of uh, a competitive edge so i'll take the over adam if you're calling those games what are you looking forward to oh you know if i'm calling the games i want all the red cards um <laughs> yeah. look I, I yeah take the over the two and a half is a really tricky one because yeah. there's only there's only three so 
just based on the fact that a red card isn't always like a jumping studs up tackle into someone's shin, it could be a variety of things, whether it's a handball in the box, Ala Joel Waterman or something. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll take the over. I think um, there's that passion, especially as this rivalry grows each yeah. year is going to get more and more intense. And I, I think that we might see some spirited contests. I'll take the over. Was the Escalante yeah. still here as well? So that's, that, true. that's always got the, uh, yeah, a lot of hinges on that. I like the <laughs> smirk from e- Easton perks up a little bit when we say Jose Escalante. I like that. Yeah. How much does he, uh, yeah, get under your guys' skin, if at all, when, you, when you're going up against a guy like that? I, I mean, personally, uh, not that much. I, I wasn't around him that much on the field. And uh, I will say he's a really good guy. The time I was with Calgary in preseason, he was, uh, he was great. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I can see he definitely gets under uh, some people's skin and uh, definitely an annoying player to play against. All right, uh, Easton, that wraps up our over-under segments. But we want to know, um, after that first year uh, with FC Edmonton, you had a great breakout campaign. Then you signed a multi-year extension with the club, staying at home uh, for yourself. What are the goals of going into this year uh, before everything was obviously postponed? So what were the goals coming into the season? Yeah, I think it was definitely just to, to build on last year. I mean, if you would have told me a year ago that that's the season I would have had, I would have been ecstatic, but mm-hmm. like I am. And uh, I think going into this year, it's just about uh, consistency, starting as many games as I can, um, contributing to the team as much as I can, and just really taking on a bigger role within the squad. And then uh, hopefully giving myself some exposure to uh, move up from here and move on to the next level. Um, it's, it's been a pretty interesting offseason for FC Edmonton. Um, obviously, Didich coming back was big, and, and then there's been some good signings, Boakai, Alaman, you know, guys who maybe can get, give the team a bit more creativity than last year. Do you think that that gap between yourselves and, and Calvary and Forge can be closed? I, I think it can, yeah. Um, I think there is a lot of parity in this league, and uh, although Forge and Calvary definitely were the, the two top dogs last year, I, I think it's... Uh, not as big as a gap as as some people may have thought. And I think that uh, games were still tight. I mean, even between us and Forge, we, we had a lot, a lot of tight games. And uh, yeah, I, I think this season can be a lot different for us. Mm-hmm. Since you brought it up, I'm curious. We were we were going to ask you this earlier, but we sort of got so re- caught up in our overrunner that we missed it. But mentioning you, your desire to move up, I think that's normal. It's no secret that the, it's a development league right now and you want to go into bigger and better things. What is your goal? What What would you like to do sort of short-term and long-term? Where would you like to see yourself end up? I mean, uh, the dream's always been Europe. Um, I just recently acquired my Italian passport. So uh, I think that's a bit of a, a first step in that, in that dream. And uh yeah, I mean, whether it be that or MLS, making that jump is just, it's, it's the dream for me. And it's, I mean, why I work every day to uh, get better. And uh, yeah, so I mean, wherever it may be, just making that jump to the next level and uh, getting that experience. Yeah, so how encouraging was the Emilio Estevez signing uh, to the Eredivisie? Are you looking to Europe a little bit more today? Yeah, I mean, every time something like that happens, it just uh, makes you realize how, how much more more possible it is and how much more likely it is for things like that to happen. And I mean, you just train every day thinking that you could be next. You, you could be the next one that uh, is getting a transfer to Europe or MLS or just making that jump. Yeah, your game is uh, it's quite unique. We talked about your height so much, but you're very technically sound. Uh, who do you model your game after? Um. Well, I'd say my favorite player is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, I mean, he, he's pretty tall. He's uh, got incredible feet, good footwork, and uh, he's not your traditional, like, just hold up, flick on striker. So I think yeah. if there's someone I could try and uh, emulate, it would be him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> Sorry, just before we get we get on to, I think we've got another rapid fire section coming, but I, w- I wanted to ask you, going back to the start of last year, obviously you were drafted actually by Cavalry in the eSports draft and, and you end up signing for Edmonton and, and having a really successful season. Can you take us through how that kind of unfolded and, and how you know you end up in, in training camp with Cavalry, but, but then signing with FC Edmonton? Yeah, so I was uh, drafted by Cavalry, went to uh, their preseason and... Uh, it came down to me or uh, Gabriel Batar, the other draftee, and uh, they they ended up choosing to sign him to the to the U Sports deal, 
and offered me an opportunity to play with the Foothills Development Squad with the hopes of making the jump to Cavalry mid-season perhaps or in a following year and uh, that was something that definitely interested me and uh, I was considering it but when I returned home from the preseason camp I just uh, sent an email to Jeff Paulus said hey I'd like to meet with you uh, get your thoughts on things and uh, after that things happened pretty quickly he uh, was willing to offer me a contract and uh, yeah next thing I knew I was uh, with FC Edmonton so Mm -hmm. there wasn't too much to it but uh, yeah, it, it worked out well for me. It's a good what email. Was that, what was talking. that first interaction like with Tommy when you saw him again? I mean, I'm, Tommy doesn't seem like the type of person to hold a grudge or anything, but I mean, did he give you a bit of a, looks like we missed out on something pretty special or more just generally happy for you? Or what was that dynamic like when you saw them again? Yeah, no, I think he was just happy for me that things worked out. Um, he was very accommodating in the whole process. He had to agree to it with the, the league and with Jeff. And it was a, uh, really just a matter of him doing what he thought was best for the player so uh yeah no i really respect him for the way he handled things and just uh, giving me the opportunity to make that move so uh yeah no it worked out well and he was uh, very good about it yeah it certainly worked out well for you you've made great strides uh, over the last couple of years uh, what do you have to do to improve your game and take it to the next level now and uh yeah eventually end up in europe or wherever you may go yeah, I think uh, in the CPL, I got to just take on a bigger role in my team and uh, do a bit more, maybe, maybe start scoring from a bit further out, uh, <laughs> get some more chances and uh, yeah, just really take on that, that leadership role as an attacking player and someone that can uh, help the team win games. All right, uh, time for the rapid fire segment now. Um, I'll start things up. Uh, you mentioned him already, but I uh, just want to get confirmation here. What's your fav- who's your favorite player growing up, Easton? Okay, so I did say Zlatan Ibrahimovic, yeah. who's been my favorite player for the past uh, probably five years. But uh, the first player growing up that I really, like, truly fell in love with was uh, Francesco Totti. Nice. See it? Yeah. Totti's a good, good one. So, uh, yeah, obviously links to, to Italy. Um, yeah. uh, any other uh, Italian players that uh, really, um, I guess, motivated you or influenced you as a player? Uh, the other one would probably be uh, Luca Toni. Yeah. I mean, I really started getting into soccer around uh, 2006, right when Italy won the World Cup, and it was just like the most amazing thing. And totally had me drawn in. And uh, since then, it's been nothing but disappointment at World Cups for Italy. But <laughs> it started well. Do you have a, an Italian club team, Easton? Not really. No. Uh, I mean, Roma was obviously my team growing up, just because of Totti. But uh, now, now I enjoy watching AC Milan just because of uh, Zlatan's there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I've never really had a team, like one team that I support. Yeah. All right, um, next one. Okay, so we know, obviously, you're the one of the star men for FC Edmonton. Your uncle Ross is a big figure in Edmonton soccer as well. Um, but can you name me one thing that, about the city of Calgary that is better than Edmonton? Uh, what's that story? It just cut out for a second there. Uh, I, the question was, can you name me one thing about the city of Calgary that is actually better than Edmonton? Uh... Honestly, I just spot. I, I think it's a nicer <laughs> city, in my opinion. I, I don't have, uh, I mean, Edmonton's my home. I, I love it here and my family's here. But uh, other than that, there's not, nothing too special about Edmonton. <laughs> I don't want to fan the flames of any uh, Edmonton fans, so I'm just going to leave that one right where it is. <laughs> um, speaking of cities, this is one of my favorite games to play is the, the what's next speculation. So what would you like to see? Or which city would you like to see the CPL expand to next, if you could choose? Um, well, I know there's uh, talks of perhaps a team in Saskatchewan and Quebec. I, I think Quebec would be a good one. I, I would like to see that and uh, to have that as a place to travel would be would be great. Mm. Yeah, Quebec City would be beautiful. You got I another got- one? You come up with another one, Easton? I think uh, Jody Chiara gave us a Kelowna a little while back and I loved it. That's a good well, shout out to that, Cologne. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I spent almost uh, every summer there. So, yeah, cool to have a team there. Yeah. I wonder which manager would get in the most trouble with all the vineyards nearby. That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Last one uh, in honor of Uncle Ross. We want to know uh, if you had to choose one look to sport this upcoming season, if it'd be the 80s short shorts. Or the 80s hair? You said you're cutting your own hair, so it may not be the hair, but uh, if you had to pick one, what, which would it be? Um, you know, with my long legs, I don't think the, the shorts are uh, <laughs> that tough, you know, I'll take the hair. 
You look like yeah. an Aussie rules football player out there. I think it'd be a great look myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You have to grow it out. Uh, yeah, we've just got about uh, five minutes left. If anyone has any questions on the YouTube chats, feel free to fire away. We'll try to get to them. I uh, just want to get your thoughts on, um, well, big opportunity coming into uh, this year. The, uh, the Olympic qualifying team roster was named in February, and uh, you were named to that roster. How disappointing uh, is it so that you weren't able to, to see that one through? Yeah, it, uh, I mean, with all this happening, it came as a bit of a shock. But, uh, yeah, I was disappointed not to see uh, kind of how things would have worked out there. But at the same time, I mean, a year ago, if you would have told me that I would have been in the talks for the Olympic qualifying roster, mm -hmm. I, I would have kind of shrugged it off and not really thought about it. But, uh, yeah, just being on that list was, was pretty special to me. Um, and it's just kind of a, a testament to the work I've been putting in for the past yeah. few years here. That's a good point, Ethan. What do you think you'd be if not for the CPL? What would you be playing? What would you be doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd still be in uh, university, uh, sitting in classes, playing university soccer. And uh, I mean, that's not where I wanted to be. And mm -hmm. uh, without the CPL, that's, that's where I would be. So I think it's, uh, it's changed my life. And uh, it's done that for, for a lot of other players. Jason, you talk about next year wanting to take on more of a leadership role. How do you balance that as such a young player? Because obviously there's a certain degree of leadership and, and sort of presence that comes with being such a prolific goal scorer. But at, at a younger age and, and a very experienced team, how do you find the, the balance of being confident enough to have that voice and step up and not stepping on toes? Just sort of where do you sort of work on to fit in but still have that presence? Yeah, I think uh, personally, I've never been the, the loudest guy in the locker room or the, the biggest leader in that sense. But uh, I think it's just uh, the work I put in on the field and on the training ground and just kind of uh, doing my part to contribute to the team and help, helping the team win games. I don't think it's a matter of having to really uh, talk to guys or uh, motivate guys in the locker room, but just really uh, making sure I have consistent performances and just re really doing my part in contributing. Who are those um, kind of big leadership figures that you look to in, in the Edmonton locker room, Easton? Um, is there anyone in particular that, that kind of helped you last year? Yeah, I think uh, someone like Tomi Amiobi, who's uh, an experienced forward, a similar player to me. And uh, he's really just a leader in the locker room, on the field, on the training ground. Just everything he does is professional. And uh, he, he really motivates us to just be better every, every time we play. Yeah. All right, one final question for you, Easton. Uh, come from the chat. Uh, it's from a fan. Jack O'Brien wants to know, uh, what are you hoping to see from FC Edmonton fans this year? Uh, just continued support, like, like we've gotten uh, through the ups and downs. They're always there. And uh, it goes a lot further than I think they, they know. And we uh, really appreciate it. So just, uh, yeah, continued support. What's your fondest fan memory from the first year? Anything stand out for you? Um, I, I think it would have been when they uh, made their first chat for me after I uh, started playing and scoring. When I uh, started hearing my name coming from the stands, is uh, it's motivating. It's exciting. How do you let yourself get lost in that moment a little bit? Obviously, you got to get back and focus in the game. But when that happens, since there's sort of like a goosebumps, I've made it mm -hmm. moment where you really just absorb it before you get back to the game. Or do you try not to get yourself too distracted mid-game? Um, I, I think the first time I, I heard it, it kind of got me excited and kind of took my head out of it for a second. But I think, uh, yeah, after the first time, it was just kind of, that was my motivation. I expected it. And if I played a game and I, I didn't have that moment, then I almost felt like I didn't do enough. So, I, yeah, I think it was a bit of a just motivation piece. All right. We're hoping to hear it uh, soon. We're hoping to hear it uh, plenty <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this season. I want to thank you so much for coming on with us, Easton. It was a blast to chat with you for a little while there. I uh, want to remind everyone, uh, subscribe to our One Soccer YouTube channel. Plenty of great content there tonight. Uh, Gareth Wheeler is going inside the game with Robert Earnshaw from the TFC and Vancouver Whitecap products. So that should be fun and uh, interesting for uh, Oliver Platt and Adam Jenkins. I'm Asa Raymond. Adam's back hosting tomorrow. Be sure to tune into that. Have a good one. See ya.